Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Connecting with Kim here on Tampa Bay Arts and Education Network. We're so glad you joined us today. We have a really great program. And before we start, I like to give my uh, my sponsor, The Spring of Tampa Bay, a shout out for always providing me the most wonderful clothes and the most wonderful jewelry for my show. So please visit them located at the corner of Swan and Henderson because all net proceeds from the thrift store and the boutique go to support their mission of sanctuary and services to survivors of domestic violence and their children. And they've been doing a great job since 1977, and I want you to support them. And I also want to mention that you can find the audio of our show on Sun Radio, 96.3 FM in Sun City Center, and on your favorite streaming platform. So let's begin, because we are always excited on Connecting with Kim when we have A, a new person in the chair, and B, a new topic to tell you about, because our show is devoted to making your life in our corner of paradise a little bit better. So let me introduce my guest, and I'm going to put on my glasses for this, because I don't, I know her name, of course, but I want to, don't want to make sure, I want to make sure I don't miss any details. So my guest today, and I'm so happy to have her here, is Noelle LaCour, who is here as a board of director and secretary for Camp Bayou, which is the outdoor learning center located in Ruskin, Florida. And I bet a lot of you people don't know about it, but by the time you get done, you're going to know all about it. So, Noelle, welcome to Connecting with Kim. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. I'm so happy. So I give my guests at the at top of every show uh, a few minutes, take as much time as you want, to share a little bit about their life journey, which brings us to the subject we're going to talk about today. Um, so I have lived in Florida most of my life, um, actually in South Hillsborough County. I grew up in Riverview, went to Riverview High School. Um, I'm married with two uh, teenage children. We live in Ruskin. We have um, for almost 17 years. Uh, right down the road, actually, from Camp Bayou. I'm a couple miles from Camp Bayou, which is how um, I you know, found out about it. That was right down the road for me, so I started uh, taking my children there. My son learned how to uh, throw a cast net at the end of uh, 24th in the Little Manatee River when he was three. Um, so, you know, we've been going there for a long time, and uh, about five years ago, I joined the board. Well, uh, that is so wonderful, because I know from your Facebook post that you are so involved with Camp Bayou, and I know that you uh, also function as a teacher uh, for some of their programs and a guide uh, for their uh, the di various things that they offer at Camp Bayou. So let's... Uh, Let's first start at the basics about Camp Bayou. So let's start with, you know, what is Camp Bayou? Where is it located? Uh, I, you and I talked before we went on air uh, about the ELAP program, so we want to be sure. And then we'll branch out into all the wonderful activities and programs that Camp Bayou offers. Does that sound like a good idea? Yes. Okay, good. So Camp Bayou is 200 acres. Mm -hmm. uh, most of those acreage were um, purchased in 1990 with the ELAP um, funds, which ELAP stands for Environmental Lands Acquisition Protection Program. Mm -hmm. um, which is, uh, so that's 200 acres out of the 66,000 in Hillsborough County that fall under ELAP uh, or were purchased with ELAP money. So it is a preserve um, where we have um, lots of different uh, types of habitats. We have from wetlands to uplands. And when you get into the uplands, we have um, some oak hammock um, forests, some pine forests, and some scrub habitat. So it's a really uh, unique area. Uh, also, the Little Manatee River um, flows right through the south part of the property. Well, you know, and I love that you're talking about the ELAP program because I, I think a lot of people, and we have so many people coming in, you know, new to Hillsborough County, have moved here within the last year or year and a half, right? And they probably know nothing about Camp Bayou, so this is a wonderful opportunity for them. And it's also a wonderful opportunity for them to understand the value of the ELAP program because you and I both know that if it wasn't for that, all of, the, all of this nature area, the 66,000 acres, would probably be developed or paved over or whatever. So... This is a wonderful, demonstrates a wonderful use of ELAP funds. Yes, most definitely. Um, well, it helps to preserve, um, you know, the old Florida and habitats for our animals because um, preserves can never be developed. So, yes, it's very important. So let's talk about what, uh, I've got a little list here, but, you know, I know you know it better than anybody because you've been involved with it. Uh, so tell, start, let's share with the folks about what kind of programs does Camp Bayou offer and why would you want to take advantage of it? So we offer all the different types of programs. Um, so we have a, a paddle twice a month. Um, 
where we lead um, about an hour and a half tour uh, through the Little Manatee River. We also and that's what in a canoe uh, or canoes a and kayaks, and, and we rent them out. Okay. Yep. Um, and actually, it's really cheap. It's twenty five dollars, uh, and the canoes hold three people, and the kayaks hold one. But we do also have one tandem, um, or you can bring your own for just a five dollar donation. We have a very nice dock um, for the canoe, canoes and kayaks, and they um, you can actually access that anytime on your own. Uh, we just offer the the lead paddle tour twice a month. And so, and so, you're, so people come and then they go on the tour and how long is the tour? It's about an hour and a half. Okay. Two hours if you've never um, kayaked or canoed, you're going to end up in the bushes a few times. Um, but yeah, it's never been longer than two hours. And we also offer a nighttime one um, during the fall and winter, or mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, fall and springtime, mm -hmm. um, which is just beautiful. I call it the Disney effect because you have um, the moon flowers, which only open up um, at dusk, and basically the you know the moon illuminates them. And then we also have fireflies down there. It's one of the only places, um, the last place I've seen them in Hillsborough County. Oh, that sounds exciting! It is, it is beautiful. And 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 then you've got that you've got you know uh, in the fall and the spring you have the beautiful sunsets. Uh, on top of it all, so now you're, you know, what that sounds like a lovely experience. Yes, we start out uh, right before dusk, so we do get to see the sunset and all the beautiful colors. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, the Little Manatee River doesn't have a lot of development on it, so actually we only pass about three houses, um, and, and you know it's still a very rural area, but. Um, and everybody can take advantage of that. Adults, uh, adults with children, etc. Right for that? Yes. Twice, twice a month paddle. Yes. Yep. Okay. And it's on our website um, where we have a calendar where it ha has all of our events or on our Facebook page. We put a lot of stuff on there too. And we'll talk about that all later, folks. We'll we'll make sure we cover all that. Okay. So we have the twice a month paddles. Tell me what else is going on. Um, so then we also do. Um, uh, led tours through our trails, mm -hmm. um, walking, and also with a golf cart that holds seven people plus the driver. Um, and that's, that's very important because some people cannot um, you know, get out onto our trails. So this way they can still enjoy the woods and the trails without having to um, you know, walk for those who it's difficult. So do you have different kinds of trails with different kinds of um, uh, views? Uh, are, they, are they, you know, so sometimes in preserves you find there's a trail for this kind of view and it takes this much time. Do you have the same? Yes, we do. Yep, we have um, a trail through the uh, wetlands and through the uplands, um, the, the oak canopy, and through the pine forest. Oh, that's, it's awesome. As soon as you hit it, you can just smell, you know, all the pine trees. It's, it's amazing. You can't go to Camp Bayou and not fall in love. <laughs> I, and, and you can tell folks I haven't been there yet because I'm asking all these questions because I want to know. Uh, so how long do the, do the so the, I'm imagining the trails take as long as you want to take, right? Yeah, and which trails you take. Um, I think they all add up to less than five miles. Okay. Um, yeah. And we actually just opened a new trail um, about a year or two ago um, on 40 acres that we added to Camp Bayou, or the county added to Camp Bayou. Um, called the Palmetto Pass, um, so that's really exciting. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So you have another, uh, a different kind of landscape and a different kind of viewpoint. Yes. Uh, to share. Okay, so we have uh, the twice a month paddle. We have the hikes. Tell me what else. So we also offer um, environmental education classes for children and um, natural history. So we had a Native American Indian tribe called the Usita that lived um, along the Little Manatee River. So we have a mock up of their village. Um, and we offer classes like rope making and uh, native tools and games. Um, we have an archaeological dig. And, um, yeah, and then we also, for the environmental classes, we have uh, gopher tortoise classes, frogs and toads, uh, ant lions. That's one of my favorites <laughs> is the ant lions. Um, we, we, it's just so much. We offer, I think there's, there's more than 20 different classes, and we can even um, create classes. We, we, create, we actually just created a, um, a fungus class. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's interesting. somebody had asked for one. Or mushrooms, yeah. Well, yeah, yes. fungi. And because a lot of people, I think, I think that's a, a marvelous thing to add because, you know, a lot of people go out in the woods and they're like, well, I want to collect some fungi. But it's like, well, not every fungi is a good thing to collect, right? Yeah, or even I mean, yeah, you got to know. You yeah. got to know the difference or you could be in some serious trouble, right? Yes. And it, it's, um, you know, because uh, one fungi can look uh, just like one that, that's not safe, just like, you know, uh, the same thing with edibles, that's, which we also teach um, an edible, well, it's not really edible, it's actually Native American ga uh, gathering, which is basically, you know, edible. So I teach the children um, the different plants and names of them and how they were utilized by the uh, local tribe. Um, and is there, uh, so are these classes just for children or can adults pr uh, participate in them too? Um, they're basically for school groups. Um, but we have had adults, actually, I just had a group of um, adults ask uh, to do a class on uh, rope making. So I, I said, sure. <laughs> yeah, why not, right? Yeah. So, so, the, so the classes for the children are geared to what ages? 
Um, mainly elementary, but we have middle and high schoolers come. Um, it's basically their you know, field trips that they come to Camp Bayou. Um, it, it's a uh, very um, economical cost, too. It's only $5 a child. And they usually get anywhere from two to four uh, different topics because we do rotations. And how long do these uh, classes, so to speak, they're not, I hate to call them classes because they're, really they're really not that, but they're experiences. How yeah. long do they normally last? Um, 20 to 30 minutes each, okay. depending on how, how big the group is. Um, we can, um, 60, or I'm sorry, yeah, 60 children is usually the max that we can handle. Okay. And, and then we divide that up between okay. the two to four um, classes. And do they have like, so, so of that 60 children that you divide up into groups, then, then they have multiple experiences while they're there, right? Oh yeah, they do them all. They do all the experiences. We rotate. Oh my gosh, that's great. So they're there for like basically half a morning or half yeah. an afternoon, right? Yep, yeah, they usually, about, well about noon. We, they also um, usually eat lunch. We have a really nice uh, screen in pavilion, so they usually bring their lunches. Yeah, we have a lot of public school, charter schools, homeschool groups. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So now you offer programs for youth, but do you, you know, are there adult programs too that are geared just to adults? No, but any of the, the um, any of our classes can be geared towards adults. Um, we, I mean, we're pretty um, adaptive. You're, fl you're flexible, I can yeah. tell. You guys are, you guys are, you're receptive and flexible and willing to adapt to yeah. whatever the request is, right? Yes. So now, uh, does um, Camp Bayou operate all year round? Yes, yep. So the preserve is actually open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and you can park along 24th uh, Street, which is the road that leads into Camp Bayou. Um, and then you can just walk into any of the, the openings for the trails. Um, but our visitor center is only open Thursday through Sunday, 9 to 2. Um, and that's when you can come in and um, you know, the visitor center is staffed. And on Saturdays, we have um, the Paleo Preserve Museum is open. Mm. Um, and it's only open on Saturdays. They're a separate nonprofit, um, but we work together and, um, and they're amazing. They have um, all different types of um, artifacts from, um, actually, like they were taken from South Hillsborough County. The, the Leslie Mine Pit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of um, those discoveries are in there. So what what kind of artifacts are they? Oh, um, well, so we, there's pottery, and then there's also um, fossils. Sorry, fossils are the main thing that's in there. <laughs> and so is it uh, from when Native Americans were uh, inhabiting this peninsula? Well, oh, before that. Oh, even before yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So oh and there's gosh, no dinosaurs. Because that's one thing, the kids, the, um, a lot of kids will come and, oh, the dinosaurs, and there's, there's, we're no dinosaurs in Florida. So they only have um, fossils from animals that were found in Florida. And like I said, most of them were actually found in South Hillsborough County. Oh my gosh, that's so interesting. Yeah. I didn't know about the Paleo Center. If you're just joining me now on Connecting with Kim, my guest in the chair is Noelle LaCour, who is representing for us today Camp Bayou. She's on the board of directors and she's the secretary for the board. And she's also very involved and a teacher and a guide at Camp Bayou, which she lives very close to. So I can't imagine a better person uh, to be working at this facility. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, we, uh, we, have, we are very lucky to have an amazing group of volunteers. Um, so Camp Bayou was founded in 1999, so it's been 23 years that wow. it has been ran with nothing but volunteers. Wow. Um, and I, and, you know, I, I think a big part of that is um, our main director, which is Dolly Cummings. Mm -hmm. She's done a great job at keeping um, you know, it going. And um, just everybody there is, uh, you know, well, like I said, you can't come to Camp Bayou and not fall in love with it. So I, I can I tell. I can tell just by looking at your face and 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 your expression and everything that you how much you love that place. I love it. <laughs> I mean, I know you're a nature person. You, I mean, I, I I've I've seen you. You do a lot of posts about nature and things like that uh, on your Facebook page, and I can just tell that you're just such a nature person. And so this is like a perfect fit for you. Yes. It yes. It, so how many volunteers do you have working at Camp Bayou? Oh, oh, we're very low actually right now. Mm. Um, we've lost a lot of our teachers during uh, the COVID, mm. so we really need instructors. Um, and but uh, our board is five people, um, and then we have so I, I'd say less than twenty because we do have people that only um, volunteer during the season. Like our, we have some snowbirds that come and help um, with carpentry um, items, uh -huh. and so I mean so we have seasonal volunteers. So it's kind of hard to but I'd say around twenty. Okay. And so, um, so uh, I, I imagine the bulk of your programs directed at the youth and whatnot are occurring du during what we in Florida call the season, which is fall to spring, right? Oh, I wish. <laughs> no. no, they're all year round. No. No, yes, they are. For, it is so <laughs> That's good to know. Let me tell you, August is, no. um, and there's always one kid that wants to complain about the bugs. And actually, I had one child tell me that we were committing um, nature abuse on them. <laughs> 
<laughs> really? Yeah. I said, don't worry, it's almost lunchtime. You're almost done. <laughs> Why, why, why would, why Just because it was hot and, oh, you know, yeah. there were some bugs. It really isn't that bad. <laughs> I mean, the heat, you know. Yeah. It's Florida. Well, let's face it. It's Florida. Yeah, it's Florida. I mean, I mean, starting in, like, June, July, I mean, you can expect heat and humidity until, you know, September at least, yeah. right? Yeah, and during the summer months, I um, when I do um, uh, my classes, I keep them, you know, in the shade. Like, we, you know, we're not out in the beating sun, but... Yeah, no, so they're year-round. Um, we get a lot of them during the school because they're um, school year because of the school groups, but we also get a lot of um, daycares um, and, uh, like, programs like that um, yeah, in the I summertime. Had, I hadn't thought about that, but that's a really great idea. Yeah, you know, camps and what people are, you know, kids are in camps and different uh, uh, programs during the summer, you yeah, know, while they're... Yeah, sorry, we even had a rec center from um, another county brought their kids. Really? Yeah. So what would you say, since you've been so involved with Camp Bayou, um, what would you say is the most interesting experience that you've had while you've been at Camp Bayou? <laughs> and I, you probably got a plethora, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, but I guess it would be, um, I've stayed the night there before. Um, the county did a camp out, uh, actually July 29th, to, uh, 2020, right before COVID hit. And um, yeah, it was interesting. I slept in one of the cabins. Um, so we, we actually have uh, two cabins. Uh, at Camp Bayou. They came from um, the Giants Camp, which is just south of the Alafaya River on 41 in Gibsonton. Mm -hmm. It was part of the carnival. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, Mosaic bought the property. They kept one of the cabins there, put a fence around it, um, and then we got two of them, and um, they were redone, and we have the inside set up as time period, because they were built in the 1940s. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so I stayed in one of those, and I did not get a good night's sleep, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> and I will never do it again. <laughs> so, so the cab are the cabins available for rental? No, or? you don't want to sleep in them. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. But they are awesome to see because, um, like I said, it's it's set up as time period. Well, one is set up as time period, and then the other is set up as like a fishing museum. Um, with actually, um, we have a table set from the Coffee Cup, which is a famous coffee and pie place in Ruskin. Um, so I actually have a photo of the coffee cup in a frame on the table. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, we love history at, at um, Camp Bayou, not just environmental education, but history as well, local native or local history. Um, so yeah. I know. I, I didn't know anything about the cabins. That sounds so fascinating. One set up like the 1940s and then the other devoted to, the, to, to this other topic. So, uh, and the coffee cup is like a famous place in Ruskin. I mm -hmm. mean, anybody who's been coming to Florida, you know, <laughs> you know about the coffee cup, right? I mean, everybody does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, wonderful. So, you've had a lot of interesting experiences. What, what, when you first became involved with Camp Bayou, what, what surprised you? You know, like, like a, as, you, as you've worked there over the years, like, I'm sure you keep having new experiences. So, what surprised you after you started working uh, there? Well, I'm not really sure. I've, I've been going there, like I said, for a very long time, mm -hmm. um, since my son was three and he's almost 20 now. Um, so, you know, we've been going there for a very long time. Um, and we, uh, but on our own, just like as a preserve. Right. And then um, I, I homeschooled my youngest, so I was looking, you know, for field trips and um, um, and getting her socialized and stuff like that. So we um, started a homeschool group, and we started going to Camp Bayou um, to take classes. Um, and I just, you know, <laughs> I was always just right up front with the teacher <laughs> asking questions <laughs> and learning. So, you know, it just kind of pulled me in even more. And then, um, you know, they would do the Keep Tampa Bay cleanup, so we'd volunteer with those. And, um, you know, they, all their activities, we, you know, we would just, my family and I would, uh, would join. And then um, one day I went to their board meeting, and they asked me if I wanted to join. And you said sure. Yeah, I, I, when I went to it, I wasn't. I just wanted to see what they did, what they talked about. <laughs> see, that that'll teach you. I know. Don't I know. show up because they'll draft you. I know. Now I'm secretary. <laughs> <laughs> but so. that's great because I, I would think that um, Camp Bayou or any organization like this, you know, benefits from having folks like yourself who number one love it so much. Number two you know, are there a lot and working there and have been enjoying it for years. I mean, from my point of view, I, I think that would be great for them to have you on their board. And you're such a wonderful spokes, spokesperson <laughs> for, their, uh, for their Camp Bayou. So I think from their standpoint that it's a match made in heaven, right? Yeah, we have a great board. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, so tell me who else is on the board. Are they, are they folks like yourself, or are they, you know, do they have jobs somewhere else? Or what uh, are they we're doing? all just a little different. Yeah? Yeah, some are retired. Um, James and I are the youngest, because um, most of the people, you know, are, are older. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, we're just, everybody's <laughs> so, you know, nice. We get along well, and, uh, and we all, like I said, we, we love Camp Bayou. So I think that's, you know, the big factor um, that, that keeps it going. Uh, 
Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Like I said, you know, because it's a nonprofit and, um, you know, 23 years r running on volunteers, that's... That's pretty amazing. Yeah, well, and we, we do not get any money from anybody, not the county, not the state. Uh, we uh, raise money from our school groups and the, um, the tours. And yeah. The, well, and yeah, right. all the extra little things we do like that. Well, I was going to ask you that because, you know, we talked about before we went on air, you know, you, you got the land from the county as, as part of the ELAP program, but they don't give you any funding. So I was very curious as to how you fund yourselves and how you keep going because 23 years, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of work to do in a, in a, in a preserve. Yeah, so we do um, apply for grants um, and we've gotten a few grants um, and then donations. Uh, we, we get some donations, so that's, that's how we, we run. Um, so we have a lawnmower. We, you know, mow the grass um, and trim the trails. It's not too bad. The county does help out sometimes because it is ELAP property. It doesn't belong to, um, you know, Camp Bayou Outdoor Learning Center. Um, but so the county does, I, you know, I was wondering about this. So the county does for ELAP uh, land, they do provide some maintenance support. Oh, yeah. They, well, they maintain, their, you know, um, a lot of that 66,000 acres, um, they maintain the fence lines, the, um, the fire lanes, and, and all that, and the trails. Um, with our contract, we do, we trim the trails ourselves mm -hmm. um, and mow. Oh, okay. So uh, we've talked about a lot of the um, programs that you offer in classes. Is there anything we've missed that you want to share with us? Because I know sometimes when you're, you know, when you're in the chair like that yeah. and you're trying to think of all the things that you want to talk about, you know, so I always want to, you know, give you an opportunity to, did we, I always like look at my list, but I'm like, well, okay, did we, oh, the butterfly thing. The butterfly habitat. I remember reading about the butterfly habitat. Yes. So um, that you uh, see that as soon as you you pull into the driveway for Camp Bayou, it's very pretty. And the um, the Sun City Audubon Club. And I hope I'm saying that right because there's actually two Audubon clubs out there. I guess mm -hmm. um, one of them <laughs> um, comes every single Friday. Well, their work days every Friday, but they also come other days and um, you know pull out the the weeds mm -hmm. and um, and and keep the shells um, where they're supposed to be because they get moved around. They do a great job. Um, it, it, and the butterfly um, habitat, when you drive by it, it looks very pretty, but you have to walk through it. You got to get out and actually go through it. Um, it's beautiful. We, there's, it's full of all types of uh, native plants. And right now, um, the grass is like the mooly grass is um, blooming. It's beautiful. Oh, I bet. And, then, and I'm sure it's filled with all kinds of different species of butterflies. Yeah, um, well, uh, lots of pollinators, yep. All yeah. different types of uh, bees and butterflies. Um, and we even have a gopher tortoise that lives um, in, the, in the butterfly habitat. Oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah. You know, people don't understand uh, how important pollinators are to, I mean, the number one industry in, in, in uh, Florida is agriculture. I mean, it's the number one. It's not tourism, it's agriculture. And there's no agriculture uh, without pollinators. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, they say something like two-thirds of um, every bite of food uh, comes, you know, is, is hap um, happens because of a pollinator. Exactly. Yeah. So is there any other uh, parts of Camp Bayou we haven't covered yet? I want to make sure that we get it all in because this is going to be, um, I want everybody to know about it because I want everybody to start visiting Camp Bayou in uh, Ruskin in South Hillsborough County because it is a preserve and an outdoor learning center and it sounds absolutely wonderful. And if you like hiking and, uh, and nature and all these kind of things and paddling, which I, I love. I mean, I used to be a really avid kayaker. Um, so tell, is there anything else we haven't covered um, about your offerings? I think that's about it. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. <laughs> well, don't, 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 don't worry about it. Man. So I like to, uh, as we get down below five minutes or so for the show, I always love to give uh, my guests like yourself uh, an opportunity to look into their camera and share with the listening and watching audience any message that they want to deliver about the topic they're here to discuss with me. So this is your opportunity to take a few moments and just look, that's your camera right there, <laughs> and you look in there and you just deliver any, you know, message that you want to the, the folks out there. Um, well, I guess I would just say, you know, uh, come visit us and um, check out our website at campbayou.org or our Facebook page at Camp Bayou Outdoor Learning Center. Um, we have calendars on both where you can look and see what, um, what events are coming up. Um, and then also you could just um, you know, come down and, and visit us. Saturdays are the best days to visit um, because that's when the Paleo Preserve is open and that's when we have the most volunteers at the Visitor Center as well to answer questions. Um, and if I'm there, I will give you a tour. Even better. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you have a website, you have a Facebook page, you have a calendar where people can check out the events. I mean, I think it sounds like the most wonderful place, and I am a little bit 
ashamed <laughs> to be quite, so quite, quite frank, that I have lived all these years in Hillsborough County and I have never been to Camp Bayou. So I am putting that on my list of my bucket list of things to do to get over to Camp Bayou because I like all those things. I like, I like looking at butterflies and pollinators. I like uh, paddling. I like taking hikes. I love nature. And you're right. I mean, th this is one of the few areas I think which looks like Florida looked, you know, from the start. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's definitely old Florida. It's old Florida. And if you, I've been coming to Florida since I was four years old, so uh, visiting Florida. So I know what old Florida looks like, and it is fast disappearing mm -hmm. even as we speak. And I think to have this, this wonderful little gem in South Hillsborough County, which, folks, you, you don't have to live in Hillsborough County. You can live in other counties and still visit Camp Bayou. Yep. So, uh, Noelle, I want to thank you so much for being my guest today on Connecting with Kim. It was wonderful to have you. Yes, thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. So my guest has been Noelle LaCour, who is uh, here today talking to us about Camp Bayou. And it's a wonderful little gem in South Hillsborough County, located in Ruskin. And Noelle is uh, on the board of directors there. She also uh, is a guide and a teacher and runs programs there. So you couldn't ask for a better spokesperson for Camp Bayou. So uh, that's all we have time for today on uh, Connecting with Kim. We'll be back next week with another edition of Connecting with Kim. And you can find, again, our audio on Sun Radio 96.3 FM in Sun City Center and on your favorite streaming platform. And before I leave, I always like to thank uh, the Spring of Tampa Bay and the Spring Boutique for providing my on-air wardrobe because everyone tells me, and I'm very appreciative of this, of how great I look every week on the show. And I really, really love that. Uh, so I just want to um, ask you to, you know, take care, be safe, go visit Camp Bayou because, you know, it's a great place. And it is part of what makes living in Hillsborough County and our little corner paradise the best place we can be. So come back next week. See you later.